All right, let's talk about that. I mean, two issues, and certainly you're very articulate on the issue of what's happening in the Middle East. You bring a, a perspective that I think isn't always heard uh, very frequently uh, here in the United States. So f first question, um, do you think after all of your uh, years of experience, can there be a, a, a really a true, a long-lasting peace in the Middle East? I am a, an optimist by nature. My husband, who saw for 47 years of his reign everything, the best and the worst of, of, of humanity, of um, Middle Eastern politics, of, of, um, of, of so many aspects of, of, of what is the turmoil, and has been and still in, in, in many different areas in the Arab world as well as in Israel are shining lights of open, um, humane, compassionate minds that recognize how important it is that, that everyone lives in peace, who, who, who really understand what the meaning of the golden rule was because it's articulated in, in Judaism. Um, by Hillel, the, the, the Judaic scholar who said, um, um, I can't remember the exact words, but it, it was, um, it's the golden rule. And then he says, that is the whole Torah. And then, um, you know, Jesus said, do unto others just, uh, just as you would wish them to do unto you. And the prophet Muhammad said, um, no one of you is a believer until he wants for his brother what he wants for himself. All three faiths. Um, teach that, as do most faiths in the world. It, it, it's really the, the seed and the core of what we all share in common. Um, and you will find so many in the region who understand that Jews, Christians, and Muslims are one family of faiths. We're the Abrahamic faiths. Muslims revere the prophets from Adam until the prophet Muhammad. That means the Jewish, Christian, and 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 Muslim um, so what, what uh, prophets, you think? and so there are those lights. But um, today, now being pragmatic. <laughs> today um, things are, are looking so grim and so bleak in the region um, because I think politicians have, on all sides, tend to just narrow back into very isolated and polarized positions when. Um, when conflict or violence arises. And what you've had in the Middle East for far too long, and especially in these last several years, is just a vicious cycle of violence and counter-violence, violence and counter-violence. Lord Alderdice uh, spoke here at the Ideas Festival the other day about the um, struggle for um, peace in Ireland and uh, the struggles that led up to, I think it was the 1998 um, Belfast Accords, the, and um, so much of what he said actually is a good illustration of what um, needs to be, a, the way we need to approach things in the Middle East. And if, and if we were, I would have the hope that you're asking me whether one can have that this problem will be solved. That first of all, violence never solves any problem. That marginalizing different players and, and stakeholders in a conflict does not work. Um, that what did work for them was after they tried many approaches, including just trying to concentrate on the center, on the moderates in the center, and the majorities in, I believe, still in Israel and in Palestine and in the Arab world, the moderate majorities all are, would be capable of working out this conflict so that they can all live in peace and security. So how do you get there? How do you, but how do you the politicians have to recognize that you have to include everyone at the table, I believe. And, and that is what worked in Northern Ireland. You have to treat one another with respect. You have to recognize that people who have not been treated with dignity, who have been disrespected, humiliated, are people who are not going to be able to play a constructive role. And as we've seen throughout history, they're likely to visit the same suffering that they have felt, humiliation and dignity, on um, when, once they're in power, they're going to try to visit that on on um, on others. And many Arabs look at the Israelis and say, you, "You're a community of people who suffered so much in World War II. We can, and, and we can't understand how you now could be subjecting Palestinians to the same kind of harsh."